<laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> we've seen her before. We've seen yes, and, it's, it, and you've probably seen her before too. I mean, this video has been out for about six months. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the theme that we're well at least starting the show with. Right. So it's all about buttholes. Right. Uh, <laughs> So I think And that especially what's inside your butthole. I especially think. Yeah. what's inside your yeah. butthole. Yeah. Um I think I like I talked about buttholes the other day for about an hour straight <laughs> about how like all of this great reset, fourth industrial revolution, world economic forum stuff mm -hmm. comes just comes down to buttholes. And uh, he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, it's the butthole technology. The butthole technology. Yeah, and the little girl singing about it introduced us yeah. to, the, to, to that idea, to that idea mm -hmm. because now we have the butthole technology. Right, you know, and then we've got aliens and astronauts inside there. Mm -hmm. But um, the butthole technology that you're talking about is uh, in the form of a toilet seat. We'll give a visual here right now yeah. uh, as we talk. So um, tell us more, Julie, what's this all about? <laughs> well, it's not really about looking at your butthole. <laughs> what it's really about is getting you used to the idea <laughs> of this super invasive technology that goes way deep inside you. It goes way deep inside your emotions, your buying habits, your personal relationships, your thoughts, your feelings. Um, and so they want you to get used to this idea that you have this like uber, super intensive inv invasion of your privacy, the super intense in invasion of privacy. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is to talk about buttholes, you know, cameras on toilet seats. You can't get more invasive than that, mm -hmm. no, right? Yeah. So, well, while it's there, maybe it can give me a massage. Yeah. I mean, um, so, yeah. you know, and I think that, that that's what it's really about. And so the little girl came onto the scene and all of a sudden within just like a couple of weeks, this video of hers, you know, went viral and it got, you know, 687 million views and people were covering it. Yeah, doing cover songs of doing it. Yeah. Cover songs I mean even of Ron, it. Ron Placone, Placone did it. Yeah, one. yeah. You know. So I mean everybody uh, was on board with it. It was really funny. It's, this is to get you this kind of like symbolism and these kind of signals you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is to get you used to like super invasive technology that is going to um, extract so much from you that there's nothing left. Right. That's yours. Yeah. So well, you know, we've been hearing it's about more than just an invasion of your privacy. It's right. more than just that. Right. It's an extraction of every part of you. Right. Every piece of you is extracted for profit. Even yeah. your butthole. Yeah. Well it's more Especially than, yeah, your I mean, butthole. You know, yeah, especially your butthole. I mean it's like, you know, it's one thing to be in your face, right? Now it's up your butt. <laughs> and, you know, that's that's <laughs> it's quite a bit of uh, invasion there. And they're even inspecting sewage, from what I understand. Right. So that that's something that we learned about as well, is that they're putting in technology in water treatment plants to mm -hmm. um, inspect sewage treatment, ex inspect your sewage, you know, for so-called COVID, right, COVID evidence of COVID, whatever. Right, yeah. But the point is, is that it's all about being super invasive. Personally, I don't think they're going to do the, the, the sewage, sewage thing. thing. Yeah. I, I honestly don't well, think so. <laughs> I think that that's just more narrative to get you used to the idea of having a super invasive, super invaded life. Yeah. Like there's nothing left that is private um, can or that's them. yours that you can make for profit for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, but this, this doesn't end. This just didn't end with the little girl singing the song and then the technology and then finding out that they were, you know, um, invading our sewage uh, and monitoring our sewage and all that. It's actually now re resurfaced in the form of a Christmas tree right, well, some in people, Paris. <laughs> some Take people, it away, JP. Some, some people have been saying, been <laughs> using this this um, this this uh, narrative as, as sort of yet another example of them getting up your butt. Uh, this year in in Paris, a, a, a tree. In fact, it's a sculpture called Tree um, by Paul McCarthy. Not. To be confused with the Beatle, but he is a, a, um, a, a sculptor and artist from Los Angeles, and uh, his tree was—I think it was uh, displayed last year in mm -hmm. uh, in Paris at, at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, it was originally displayed in 2014 
um, at the at the Place Vendôme in uh, in Paris. So. Um, you know, this has been around for a while. I remember reading about it when it was first, you know, displayed and people were all up in arms and, and uh, were pretty upset about, you know, a butt plug <laughs> in, a butt in plug the middle, tree. in the middle of uh, <laughs> Paris, you know, um, somebody actually, uh, somebody actually uh, deflated it. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, they vandalized it so it would lose air. It was a, it was an inflatable, that was the other thing about it. It was an inflatable um, sculpture and uh, somebody dis they, they uh, vandalized it and deflated it. And the artist was like, eh, you know, whatever. You don't have to reinflate it, it's fine, you know. <laughs> um, because he came out and admitted that it was, you know, a joke and that it was, you know, that it, yeah, it was modeled after so, a sex toy. Okay. But, you know, here's, here's something else that he's done. Um, it's, a, it's a photo of, a, of what looks like a gnome holding a, um, another sex toy, a very gigantic one. Um, but apparently it's uh, Santa Claus and it's in uh, the Netherlands. Um, mm. So clearly the man has, is, is, kind, of, is kind of anal. <laughs> I guess. Well, okay, so this came about because, um, because of the Christmas trees in uh, Rockefeller Center in Cincinnati. Right. Right. So what happened was, just to give people some context in case you're you're wondering but where the hell are they going on about? What are we talking about? about? <laughs> so what happened was on his social media page, he posted uh, the picture of the Rockefeller tree, which we've all seen. It looks really dystopic. And also Cincinnati has um, put up the same kind of tree, a really spindly, sickly looking Christmas tree. Right. And one of our friends over in Ohio is the one who commented, hi Jenna, if you're listening, mm -hmm. um, commented with the uh, picture of tree from right. Paul McCarthy right. uh, in Paris. Now that, that comment that she made and that screen capture that she took is actually from 2019 when um, he put it up in Paris in 2019. Mm -hmm. right. But it's, it's a good, it's because of the what? situation we're right. in right now, it's a perfectly appropriate response mm -hmm. um, because like she said, oh my God, they're mocking us. Right. And she's right, yeah. even though that's from like a year ago. <laughs> right. And so this goes into this kind of modern art that you were talking about earlier. Right. Where it, modern art is always a mockery well, of... I don't know if it's a mockery. Okay, so let's, let's back up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, what you were saying before right, was so really... Right, so at breakfast time we were talking mm -hmm. about this. And so contemporary art, like, you know, um, so high contemporary art, um, like high science, is beyond the ordinary um, person's uh, ability to comprehend. Um, so, you know, what you'll see in museums or in, you know, art gallery used to see in museums and galleries. <laughs> um, before we were made. Before we were you told know, we could never go to a museum again. Right, not without, you know, certain precautions. Not without harming ourselves. Right. Um, were, were things that you know weren't necessarily understood unless you had the education and the the you know you were you were given some um, uh, you know information about it or or interpretation I used that that term last week uh, interpretation of what the art piece was about especially in the world of of um, conceptual art now I had I got my degree in something called conceptual design which was conceptual art strategies and new technologies. Um, and so, you know, I'm familiar with what conceptual art is. I'm familiar with what contemporary art um, does and is about. And, and so a lot of it is, you know, uh, about the idea and the concept behind it rather than, you know, the object itself. Um, in this case, you know, yeah, he was, he was basically doing a visual pun um, in, in public. Um, and you know the the large scale it's kind of absurdist and and okay you know but yeah what I'm okay so let me I, I need some context I need to provide some context <laughs> because see this is the problem you can't just look at a work of art and know what it's about unless you have that context unless that's what I'm trying have, to say okay but that's what, that's I what I am giving the build up okay mm -hmm. So what I've been, what I was talking about this morning is, is that on one hand, we have all this contemporary art that's very high-minded and very ivory tower, and it has, um, you know, it has some concepts behind it that you have to know, you have to be trained in, and in America at least, um, 
arts arts education have been going away and been taken away and even when we did have a lot of arts programming and and and, and education americans were very um uh uninformed or ill-informed about what contemporary art is and was and um so a lot of times what happens then is you get this dichotomy of attitudes, whereas you have the people in the arts who are looking down on the people who do not understand these, these um, types of art, okay, contemporary art, uh, because they weren't educated, they weren't informed, and they weren't given the kinds of education and information required to understand uh, what this art is about. Now, at the same time, I mean, I'm looking at both sides of the picture. Um, the, the, it seems to me like the arts are getting more and more and more ivory tower-like, right, mm -hmm. in their approach to things, to where it's like this exclusivity and um, this, this um, you know, keeping other people out except for the artists and the people who consume the 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 the, uh, the art of that you know the contemporary art the fine the fine art um and it, it seems to to live within the domain of um you know new york galleries and um uh, uh academy right the academy and you know um academic right. the academic world okay right. and so then it, it you know then it's purposely it feels like it's purposely separating um, arts, the arts from the rest of the public, and, and I have a real problem with that. Yeah, so do I. Uh, so you go, you're in Paris, and you see <laughs> a, a big green butt plug, and you think, oh man, that is really offensive. That mm -hmm. is a big green butt plug. I would much prefer to see a Christmas tree. I would, you know, especially during the holidays. I would much prefer to see something more holiday, not something so silly okay right, right. uh that was that would be the average human being's response but mm -hmm. the ivory tower art crowd that he's referring to art would say would respond to that and say oh, they're so droll they don't know that this is meant to be you know a statement about something or that it's you know some kind of um you know, some kind of larger message about how we're, you know, we're so repulsive during the holidays because we make it all about shopping and we're such, you know, whatever. Yeah. And we're so anal retentive about, you know, about how we... The perfect holiday. About the perfect holiday and all this stuff. <laughs> right. So, and it's like, oh, those poor little stupid people down there that just look at it as a butt plug instead of the larger message, right. you know, or that's whatever. so offensive and you know, so condescending. But at the same time, you know the yeah. average person right but at know? the same time you know the, <laughs> the real message so of meta it, the, it is meta because the real message of it was oh yeah this is just a joke it's right it the is a butt plug. the real message is, is yeah is it's a, a butt plug it it's looks, just a butt plug because right. it looks like a tree because McCarthy yeah. is like oh well Christmas trees all Christmas trees look like butt plugs right so you know? then going back to what you just said you know as I mentioned it was first um, displayed um, and installed in 2014 in Paris and yeah you know people again, reacted last, against last it year. but well, let me let me go on the people reacted to it negatively right so once it was you know deflated and, and you know vandalized um, he put it up again a year later in Santa Barbara where you know it met with high praise and people got the joke and and mm -hmm. so you know again you have this this um, this exclusivity and this this um, there's a I can't think of the word right now uh, <laughs> where, um, where you know you have um, you know like inner circle it's, it's basically yeah and it's basically classism basically yeah, it is. you know and again it comes back to what we keep talking about is you know we are undergoing a class war and this has been going on for a long time in academia in the arts and in the sciences um, and uh, this separation between the plebeians and the people who know or in the know and um, you know that's part of the reason I think that you know a lot of this COVID narrative they're getting away with because we have been deliberately kept out of you know actual science information right um, people have been lied to and be propagandized and 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 I mean also, people are literally... education has been yeah. cut so badly to the point to where it's like people don't know what you know basic uh immunity to you know diseases and and and, and infections are mm -hmm. you know they don't know how to treat themselves they don't know how to do anything people literally think that wearing a mask is actually 
good for your health mm -hmm. when it's actually it's actually mm -hmm. scientifically and medically speaking it's actually makes you more sick uh going back to the dystopic christmas trees and even going back further than that so i don't know about you but where we lived once COVID hit, I would say probably around June, we started getting mm -hmm. uh, bombed with fireworks yeah. and fire bombs. So firecrackers, fireworks, and we're talking huge explosions in yeah. the sky, day in and day I mean, out. This is day professional in grade and day out. fireworks. Like constant, and, and you know the animals were freaking out, the children were freaking out, and all of this was a huge me message to everybody across the country that said we can't. Put real bombs on you. We can't bomb you uh, with real bombs, so we're gonna terrorize you and psychologically torture you through uh, fireworks and firecrackers and fire bombs and things like that and noise making bombs. Um, so that went on from June, July, August, September. Uh, September. I think we got a, like a reprieve in October. Well, I, I um, remember it kind of cutting off after, after July. After July 4th. Okay. And of course the July 4th was the ultimate bombing campaign. It right. was just like, it, you know, everybody was really excited around here not realizing <laughs> that what they're telling you with this big bombing yeah. campaign is that, you know, we're headed it back to this feudal system um, that they never you know that they've always wanted us to maintain so when the country was founded they were like oh you can have your little you know free market and your little constitution for a few months but you do know that this is just us this united states is just a side project of the united kingdom and they sent out their project managers to <laughs> do things like you know land survey and and all this stuff and that you know it it was basically established as a military fiscal state um, to, to create a business out of being the world's police. We weren't ever supposed to be a free country or whatever. And so this entire time, for these last few hundred years, they've been waiting for it to go back to what it was back in you know the 1700s, which well, was a I feudal think that system. I think that there's been a deliberate... And now we're here. <laughs> I think there's been a deliberate... Um, um, uh, a moved, you know, or, or it's been deliberate basically, um, and, and incrementally, uh, things have been put into place to get us back to those, um, th that, that, uh, way of, uh, existing, right? So that you have a very stratified, um, uh, society with lords and ladies at the top yeah. and, you know, the gentry at the top and the monarchy and serfs at the bottom. I think that this is an, is not a natural course of events. No, no it's, it's not. It's a deliberate course no, of events. No, basically, you know, they, they let us believe that we had a democracy all this time, and they're like, oh, that's cute, that's nice, but any day now, we're going to have to go back to the way that it was originally planned, which was that, you know, there's the Lord and the serf and, you know, and feudalism. So they set all of the appropriate measures in place over time in, incrementally, and then finally about, you know, Mid March of 2020, they were like, "Oh fuck it," and they just and they just let go, and they were like, "You're a fucking slave now. Just that's what you are." And you know, so when you talk about anyway, so the the point is is that the um, the bombing campaign with the fireworks and the firecrackers and all this stuff that every major city in the United States was undergoing for months and months at a time, well, especially in New York. You know, it felt like months and months at a time, but it was really only about a month to two months. In, well, in, you know, I think it went from April, May, June, July. We got it back in the fall. We heard some last night. It's been going yeah. on a long time. Yeah. So, and it's been going on in, you know, bigger... We did, we did hear it last night. It, it's been going on <laughs> in bigger cities like Chicago and New yeah. York. Um, I'm sure San Francisco, here in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Well, we had reports in Oakland that mm -hmm. it was happening too. So. Anyway, so the point is, is that this was a message that, you know, they're bombing out they're they're bombing you back to you know what you were supposed to be what it's supposed to be is a feudal system that's what it's supposed to be because we're just a side project we were never supposed to be like we're going to break away from the monarchy and those videos out there and those people out there that are these hardcore constitutionalists 
that are saying, you know, the Constitution says that we're a free country and that we're breaking away from the monarchy. Okay, that's cute. That's that's really cute that you believe that the Constitution is like a real thing and maybe something can come out of it if you if you keep, you know, attaching that value system to it and it, and hopefully we can, you know, right all these wrongs that we're experiencing right now. But the reality of the way that the United States was founded, United States was founded was that we were a side project of England or, yeah, and a, well, miscal, a fiscal military state and that the whole thing with the Constitution and all that stuff was to make, was to codify and generate more wealth for the white land-owning, slave-holding men that wanted to generate more income. It didn't have anything to do with anybody else. Right. Well, you know? you know, and I like I like to say I, I feel like I feel like the U.S. was a corporate spinoff. Yeah, of we're just a and side that, project. You know, and, and that you know, you know, originally you know a lot of the colonies were in fact um, you know businesses. They were ventures, business ventures, uh, like Jamestown, for instance. Okay, um, and you know all the cruelty and all the, the the slavery and and all those things kind of just like moved into. Uh, the the more organically formed uh, colonies as things went along, and um, so I think that that um, you know we things were going along uh, you know as planned until you know this this sort of uprising that that occurred called the Revolutionary War, and you know honestly I'm not sure how <laughs> I'm not sure how you know we're both like you know kind of feeling this out but we both I'm, feel like it was not really what we're told it was no. and that um you know the, the 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 because i mean if you look at the you know the treaty of paris of uh, 18 what is it 18 uh no, i'm sorry 1783 um i was thinking of something else 1783 um you know there's some weird wording in there and i was watching a video today that that came out a couple of years ago and and he was asking the question you know why is it that the king of england is setting the terms for the peace treaty, why is it that the you know the King of England is setting those terms, not the President of the United States setting those terms? Right. Um, why is it that um, you know the King the the King is listed as the the King of of, of the United States of America? Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 very strange. Yeah. It, so know. the point is is that you know all of the fireworks and all of the fire bombs that we we did experience for months. Um, was an announcement that you know what you believed to be a a a, a republic or a free country is over okay it's really over and then what we're seeing with the dystopic christmas trees is the message the signal is that all of your traditions your outward traditions are going away um, you know, and also because the trees looked so, you know, sickly and, and dystopic, um, anything that is municipal funded or funded for, for the people is going to be the bare minimum. You can still have a wonderful, glorious, you know, holiday experience in your own home. And I'm sure that the managerial class is having lavish parties right now at our expense. We are, those two trees, the one in Cincinnati and the one in um, New York at, at Rockefeller Center, they both indicated to me that we're heading into Dickensian times. Um, so I would suggest that everybody, you know, <laughs> pull out their old, you know, version of, of Scrooge and watch that because that is, that is where we are. That's not where we're headed. That's where we are right now. We're in this Dickensian time, and those trees are really a message. They're a message, loud and clear, that this is where we are. Um, well, I think that you know, I think you know, the, what we were talking about earlier was that you know, there, it's the message is that you know, traditions are ending, um, culture and society is changing, and um, you have to. Um, change with those times and basically those times mean uh, you're 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 coming into some some bad times <laughs> oh yeah and, we're heading into some really you know, dark times or we're in some really a lot dark of things time. that are going on you know culturally you know um bars and pubs um are shut or they the the rules are changed so much that that it's like 
this isn't what we came here for in the first place. We came here to socialize. Well, all socializing is being taken away mm -hmm. um, and all culture is being changed. And, and I want to come back to that idea of all, all, all socializing is being taken away. But I just wanted to mention that, you know, the Christmas tree is not the ancient symbol that you think it is. It's only been around for about 200 years and it started with one single family in Germany. Uh, so it was a family tradition that became a more of a national tradition that then was exported out um, to the United States. Uh, and, and, the, the, and our Christmas traditions are, again, they're only about 200 years old. Right. Um, so, you know, so, so clearly, um, uh, you know, what's, what's being said to us is that, you know, this ends, mm -hmm. this is going to end Christmas as you know it. And the, the celebration of Christmas is going to end because, you know, basically you're no longer people. Right, <laughs> you know? exactly. And I, you know, I hate to, that, that's nervous laughter that I'm, that I'm <laughs> expressing. Um, but it's true. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that we should go back to Miss, <clears throat> Miss Rule. Yeah. So then before, before we celebrated Christmas the way we do now, uh, with families and, and quietly with families amongst these other shopping and stuff like Which that. Which was just a... Um, it was, there was, you know, basically Miss Rule, um, and, and not, not a woman named Miss Rule. This uh -huh. was um, basically acting out in public, but it was all done uh, ritualistically. It mm -hmm. wasn't just chaos in the streets. It was a ritualistic uh, form of um, behavior. And... Um, uh, the poor people showing up at the managerial class and start yeah, saying, exactly. give me some fucking money or else I'm going to come in and well, mess up your house. And it's kind of like trick-or-treating. Give it's, me it's, some candy it's, so it's I don't break your windows. Much, <laughs> it's very much like trick-or-treating. And yeah. I think that that tradition actually exported I can't wait for it to, to come back. To Halloween. Mm -hmm. And, you know, basically um, it goes back to Saturnalia um, mm -hmm. where, you know, there would be role reversals where the lords of the manor or the, oh, right. or the, the you know, the, 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 the gentry would serve the the the, um, the, the, the servants right and, or the poor and they would switch roles they yeah. would switch roles and then in, in <laughs> you know and so in Europe you charming. know before you know before the the 19th century uh, you had you know these these bands of boys and men who were working the fields now they were unemployed because you know the harvest was over and they were going to the lord of the manor and demanding you know the 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 beer or the wine that had just recently come you know as a result of the harvest yeah okay. you know it, it mm -hmm. was fermented it was ready to go it was that year's you know yeah. crop um, there was plenty of fresh meat because because animals were recently slaughtered there was plenty of um, produce because things were um, harvested and right. now there was lots of time on their hands <laughs> and there was lots of food to be so had that's what Christmas so that's was what, yeah that's, that's what, what really about, Christmas was you know and and yeah before so, this made-up <laughs> bullshit of exchanging presents and stay inside your house right. they only that was like it came out of like a New York Times article or something I don't know or well, the New York the Knickerbocker right, right the Knickerbockers the, were, a, were, a, were a society were a, uh, yeah a, um, a society of, of gentlemen in New York who that were, were tired of misrule they were Right. tired of having to do the role rever reversal they were tired of every year oh boy here we go, go again the well, you know the, the poverty class is going to come banging on our door again this year and they would do it for a long time it wasn't just one night like we have christmas for one night it was it like it went on for a month it went on for a month <laughs> and so least. it was like a whole month of them having to you know deal with this right. and they they created santa claus and they created uh the night before christmas mm -hmm. you know it was a poem that was originally you know, in the paper, right? Like, as what? As early as as early? It was about, I think it was like 1820, 1823, yeah. so something like that. So right. Um, so you know, basically a hundred years ago, or two hundred years ago, to and, keep people inside. Well, the whole idea was to was yeah to to get. Okay, so you it's know, a we saya. had to, Christmas. Christmas is a saya. It is a saya. It was a, it was a, it was a means of social change. The the way that we celebrate now. Um, was originally created as a means of changing social behaviors um, so that there wasn't the misrule. There were cities were developing and they were developing in, in a new way. The first industrial revolution was taking place and cities were changing. They were no longer like city centers with rural um, circles around them. Um, the, the, the rural areas were becoming more urbanized and more urbanized and the misrule did not necessarily work in that urban setting and so these um you know so-called leaders of the of the city uh 
really felt that they needed to, you know, set things right and, and, and uh, change social behavior and, and, and scold us all and say, you can't do that anymore. You have to be good little boys and girls. Stay inside and don't come out and, and uh, bother us with your uh, demands for beer and wine. So now what it seems like they're saying is we're going to go ahead and take away all your traditions. We're going to go ahead and impoverish you and you have to stay inside because mm -hmm. if we could just go back to misrule then we would have a month <laughs> of pounding on you know <laughs> people's doors and saying give us your fucking money and give us your food and give us whatever we want mm -hmm. for like a whole month and we'd be set right but they know that that was you know that was a tradition that had to go away and a lot of people don't even know about the tradition you know they have no idea they think that People actually think that this idea of Christmas with the family and the exchange of the gifts and the food and all that is like, you know, thousands of years old. I know, old. right? Well, you know, there, there are some remnants of it. Oh, really? Um, there's some remnants of it in some of the Christmas songs. Um, and Christmas caroling mm -hmm. is, is actually, you know, part, of, the... part of that old way of uh, the, the, the old, you know, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, Wassailing, right, okay? right, and so wassailing was like that. You know, they would go from house to house, and they would demand bring us you know, your figgy pudding, or right? Something exactly. Like that. So that's in one of the songs. Yeah, you know? and so those, these Christmas carols are sort of a uh, you know a remnant of that, and I would imagine that Halloween trick or treating is a remnant of that, but it's been placed into another context. Right. Um, but uh, so so you know this this idea of taking away a social. Uh, behavior or social norm that had been going on for centuries and changing it within you know 10 years is pretty radical and I pretty think that radical. we're seeing the same thing going on now right. with these dystopic trees and now with the demands that people do not socialize I wanted to come to that yeah in apparently Minnesota Right. The governor the has executive order put out a, an executive order. Yeah. Are you going to talk about that? I mean, the executive order is just incredibly extreme. Like, mm -hmm. it's one of the most extreme ones. And the only reason I know about it is because I listened to somebody else who talked about it. And so, you know, but it's something like $10,000 if you, you know, even discuss, uh, or $25,000 if you discuss, like, you know, violating the executive order. <laughs> right, right. It's just, yeah. it's ridiculous. So you're allowed to socialize in your homes, it's but even then, um, it's ridiculous. It's and ridiculous. It's, yeah. Um, so, so socializing in your home, but I mean, I think you're even limited to like how many people can come over and I think there was limitations to and that. And there's various and levels not, of fines. Right, and the, you know? there's all these fines and you're not allowed to go out and, and be social in public and out in the open or in bars or, so in a lot of these places are shut, public pools and gymnasiums and, and fitness centers are all being closed and um, you know, you're not allowed to talk to each other basically and, and that's pretty fucking messed up. Well, now again, these are decrees and they are suggestions. I decree! Right? And um, they're they're not law. There's there's no statutory yeah. number associated with it that hasn't been voted on. But what we're finding is, is that, you know, and this is something that John Steffling mentioned, was that, you know, it feels like, or it seems like, or it is, in fact, more and more governments are now ruling by decree. Right. You know. So there's this weird. It's very much the emperor has no clothes, right? It's very much like you know the emperor walking down the street naked, saying, you know, I decree that a lot of. It's really ridiculous. Like you could literally have your emperor governor say, <laughs> I decree that all restaurants and bars and movie theaters and playhouses and cafes and you know all these places have to shutter and then the those places the response should be uh-huh that's nice and then just keep doing what <laughs> right. you're doing just right. keep staying open and, yeah. and living your life but for some reason which again makes me think more and more every day i'm pretty sh i'm pretty convinced that i am not of this earth um every day i am just shocked and completely speechless at how you know people will uh hurt themselves over a decree a mm. decree is just some maniac sitting in a castle going blabbering away well, like a jabbering think, idiot you and know. you're like oh my god that's the law it's right. not the law so, like it's just yeah and i think that that there's there's degrees of this right so i've been seeing a lot more masking a lot more people you know obeying the rule 
uh, masking, but I don't think it's necessarily uh, coming from they're obeying the governor's uh, decrees as much as now the, the media's um, uh, role in this. So more and more I've been seeing people masked up and, I, and, and I've been seeing examples of the media just, you know, going full court press on, you know, uh, uh, cases, numbers of cases and, and deaths and COVID, 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 and everything is COVID, 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 right? And they're treating it like they did with like the presidential, presidential elections where it's like, well, this is good for our business. We get advertisers and we get, you know, people excited and, uh, and upset and they, they keep tuning in as long as we keep hyping this dangerous, uh, you know, uh, uh, winter cold, <laughs> you know, that's going to uh, give you the sniffles. Oh, and by the way, it might kill you if you're like, you know, 90 and have, you know, some other, uh, you know, issues with, with your health. Now, but everybody seems to be believing this stuff. So that, you know, these, these government um, decrees along with the hype of the media is really convincing people that they need to wear a mask. So I've been seeing people, you know, driving around in, in masks, and I saw this before, but I've been seeing more and more of it after a period of time of seeing less and less of it. And I see people walking around out in the open with a mask on where they didn't before. And I was seeing a, a decrease in that. And I think that there's a correlation between the, the media hyping this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's the correlation, mm -hmm. and you know, and so I've been seeing this this hyping up and this 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 amped up language coming through, and I'm seeing more and more people just even around our little neighborhood wearing mm -hmm. masks when they shouldn't have to, they shouldn't be doing that, and and they're just they're scared. That's what it is. It's fear that's selling this, not the the governor's um, you know decrees. Yeah, um, you know, at some point, uh, you know, you can hold up the uh, the media as your scapegoat. Um, and well, they're playing a role in this. I oh, think. sure. Yeah, they always play a role in this. And it's up to the individual to say, well, the media is playing a role in this and the media is full of garbage and the media is doing nothing but, you know, um, announcing these that everything is just fear and, and but I think we can only put this on people so much because you know, it is pervasive and yeah. you know the education system has has been you know there's very little uh, media awareness and 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 you know media you know you're nice I well, mean I can't yeah well I'm a little the American over. public is stupid I agree <laughs> but at the I same mean, time you know the, the, mm -hmm. the media really has been you know really irresponsible and they're doing this on purpose and they're working hand in hand with the government. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, but it's up it's really a personal choice. You know. Well, the people thing are is, choosing to they're kill, choosing kill to, their businesses. They're choosing to do okay, it. Okay, I get that. They're choosing to suffocate themselves. They're making a choice to destroy their businesses and destroy their economies and also kill themselves. They're making the choice to do that and at some point, those of us who know what's really going on, including our audience and the two of us, at some point, you know, you have to go, well, those are your choices. I don't really respect them. I don't really like them, but well, I think good that, luck to you I think those choices. Those, I think that those choices are uninformed choices, just like the elections. People think that, you know, by voting, yeah. that it's going to make a difference. And, you know, we, we put out, you put out a video um, yesterday about so, uh, something that's coming. I will talk about that in a second. Yeah. But I, we got a comment, and this, this guy was like, "Oh well, you know, there's enough Republicans in the in the <laughs> the House or the Senate or whatever that will block this." And I'm like, "See, <laughs> so that's don't the know heart. What's going on? That's the heart of the problem. <laughs> you are allowing <laughs> other people to do to represent you and do things for you, and, right. and, and it's like." That's why we're in this mess. That's why we're in this Thanks. mess. These politicians have Thanks their own interests in mind first, right? Just right. like you do, right? Right. So why would you put your <laughs> your interests in the hands of somebody else to handle it for you? It's like you've basically given away your agency. Yeah. You've given away your your autonomy to somebody else to do your dealings for you politically. And, and that's the heart of the issue. And I think that that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Sure. That the media is, is very responsible for this. The, right. the government is very responsible for this. And 
it's been a deliberate erosion of uh, education, uh, education on all levels so that people uh, don't understand when they're being propagandized, when they're being lied to. Right. Uh, yeah, it's it's really frustrating that people allow themselves and, and really, you know, love the idea of hurting themselves. I think <laughs> that I think that we live in a very uh, kind of a sick society. Um, well, I think that I agree. people really are, they love, they love it. Personally, I hate being poor and I'm not going to stop talking about how much I hate it. Um, I hate, uh, you know, feeling sick when I wear a mask. Um, personally, I hate that, you know, laws keep getting passed that hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, I hate it. Now, it seems like the rest of the world loves it. You see, that's just it. I don't think that they necessarily love it. I think they just don't understand what's going on because they, you Ignorance know, is bliss. No, though, it isn't. isn't. It? No. I think that people are really, um, have been fucked over over the course of sure, you know, the last 50 years. Sure, I've been saying this for years. 20 years. Yeah. Well, and at some point... That, you but know, if you're okay, if you're stupid, you're not going to know. You know that there was that I forget what it's called. It's like this this effect of like you know people who are are completely ignorant don't know they're ignorant, and sometimes they think they're brilliant. Oh sure, it's the Dunning uh, yeah. Dunning Kruger Dunning Kruger yeah, effect. Dunning -Kruger, you don't know yeah. what you don't know <laughs> exactly. what you don't know exactly, yeah, and that's exactly. the point I'm trying to say. Yeah. Is, is that you know, and this has been a deliberate um, erosion uh, in education and, and in common sense thinking and, and critical thinking. Yeah, um, don't I don't think people have a lot of critical thinking skills because mm -hmm. they have been taken away. They've been, you know, um, uh, you know, bred out of them, but through through not not through you know breeding, well, and, you know, and, but through trauma out of them, and, yeah, you know. and, and lack of education, and so sure. you know. And I take your point. You know, we all have to be responsible, right, for acting. You know, and, and understanding and, and and thinking about what's being presented to us. But I think that a lot of these people are so stupid that they don't realize when they're being propagandized. And it doesn't help that fucking Obama passed the, the, the Smith Month, Month Modernization, uh, Modernization Act, Act. Which made it legal to propagandize to exactly. the people. Yeah. Um, basically, I mean, it's a little bit more involved than that. But sure, that's but, the but basic they're allowed to, from the, the that, media is now allowed to know, propagandize us. Right. And that's not being up. held accountable so there's a lot there's a lot of different layers to this you know yeah. i just i feel that that just a, just a very basic broad re response to all of this is that you know for, for for myself you know for me personally um i've been dealing with stupid people for 20 years i've been yeah, yeah you know too. dealing with stupid managers and stupid co-workers and stupid friends and stupid boyfriends and stupid you know people my whole life and i always would make excuses for them oh well you know it's because they this happened and they weren't informed about that or they made the incorrect assumption about that so it's not really their fault and i was always making excuses for their stupidity the problem now is that other people's stupidity and other people's laziness and other people's you know fear-based uh living mm -hmm. is affecting me personally right um and that's where you know i stop i, I stop giving excuses you know well, um, and i think it's affecting you know everybody who's who who thinks about this stuff our audience obviously and you know people that we follow you know we're all being affected by this and we're all realizing it's just like what you said it's stupid people having an effect on our lives in very negative ways. Yeah, I mean, it's really uh, it's really frustrating and there are yeah. other content creators and informers and instructors and podcasters and, and they go beyond their platforms. They go beyond their online platforms and they actually go out there and have meetings and meetup groups and do real things and, and they have, you know, <clears throat> actual you know ex real life experiences going on that operate outside of this whole mask covid thing paradigm whatever that's going on they cre have created these mm -hmm. kinds of you know they're small <coughs> and very grassroots but they're happening um and uh 
I think that's the, the, the better way to go, you know, to decentralize, to get away from it, you know, oh, and have an option. You know, we love public transportation. Unfortunately, the public transportation system that exists wants us to commit violence on ourselves. When you have to put on a mask, that's you committing violence on yourself. So... Or them convincing you you need to do Right, that. or them telling us, and mm -hmm. if we argue and say, well, you know, you're a, 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 a municipal body that's government funded, so I'm not too cool with the government um, telling me to commit violence on myself, so no. Then their response <laughs> is, well, then you can't get on the bus. What I'd like to be able to do is say, then I'll just go take that bus service over there that doesn't want me to commit violence right. on myself. So we need a whole new, we, like I've said before in some of my other personal <clears throat> podcasts, we need two systems. You know, we need the stupid people that <laughs> love to wear the mask and love to commit violence on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. We need them over there to do their thing. And then we'll go over here and do our thing and we'll build up a whole new society and a whole new civilization. We'll have new bus fleets, new airplanes, new stores. Uh, new concerts, a whole secondary, uh, you know, civilization that operates outside of the dumb COVID thing, which I'm a little over. I'm like, I'm over it. Like, I'm just, you know, I might have to operate within the COVID world. Like, if I really, truly, really, really need something, then sure, I'll operate within it for, you know, and, and play fealty to their, to, to their demands that I, you know, commit violence on myself. But ultimately, like, we really need to start thinking about a secondary, like, mm -hmm. civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because it's going to get worse, uh, we can talk about the, the proposed law. Right. Well, that was, that was up next. In fact, yeah. we, were, we were hinting at that a moment ago. So um, now there is a proposed law. Julie just, well, so we were hinting at it through, Julie did a video yesterday. Uh, you released it yesterday, right, mm -hmm. um, about this proposal that came out for uh, creating a bill to create a law in the state of Pennsylvania um, that will be a law that requires masks as opposed to this, you know, Governor, um, Governor Wolf dictates, putting out a, yeah, dictates, you know, like, putting oh, out, I decree these decrees, <laughs> yeah, these, yeah, these, you know, decrees that right. don't really mean so anything. So these executive orders that, <laughs> yeah, that, like, that really okay, don't hold nice. water. Um, <laughs> or from, you know, the health minister, you know, yeah. um, you know, the saying that minister, <laughs> <laughs> the minister of health, uh, that, that are saying, you know, you have to wear a mask and you have to do this and you have to do that. And I, you know, and, and this whole thing with like, you know, oh, well, you know, there are health exemptions, but you know, nobody is really, you know, honoring that. And it's no, really very it's frustrating because they yeah. cherry pick what they want and what they, so again, you know, it's like this fear thing. Um, because they're afraid they're going to get fined, you know, I had an argument with my dentist and so no, he's no longer my dentist because he wouldn't let me come into the office without a mask on. And I said, but I have a health exemption. He's like, I, no, don't, don't, don't bring this nonsense here. You know, so like he was afraid that, that people were going to get sick in his office because I wasn't wearing a mask. I think he was more afraid that he would get fined. Well, he was something. afraid of that too, you know, so that's, it's fear, you know, fear-based shit, right? So now... You know, that wasn't enough because they're getting too much pushback. Now, um, this, this low-level um, uh, representative in the, in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. From like some Assen district. Well, yeah, know. he's in Philly, Philadelphia somewhere, okay? And he's, he's basically like somebody like what you were talking about before, an AOC. He's uh, an AOC surrogate. Right, exactly. So, be, or he so, is. so young. Um, a person of color mm -hmm. who is, you know, going with the the whole you know, Democratic Party, um, you know, party line, which is basically fascism. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and you know, and using uh, you know uh, identity politics and all the you know the the bag of tricks that the Democratic Party have, have been pulling on us to insist, you know, to to make us wear masks and to make us socially distance and to all these things um, to you know and tell us that we're selfish. For, for pushing it, you know, back. Um, so now, in fact, we got a we got a um, uh, a comment on your video mm -hmm. um, saying that you know people who are against this law are selfish. Yeah, right. It's just, and it's not even a law yet. I mean, so so basically, what happened? People are was, dumb around here. Yeah, people are some dumb. locally, right. some idiots, some, some yokel dumbass. Yeah. yeah. But so what Fuck. happened was is there was and maybe you want to talk about this since it's your video. Do you want to? 
um, talk about this 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 person and his uh, his <coughs> memorandum. Yeah. So he what he did is he waited until the legislative body was. Uh, um, going on holiday. So session is closed. So right. he waited to propose it in a memo, like right before the session it was, closed. Like, came out Monday or Tuesday. Or yeah. Something. So it was a couple days before the session closed, mm -hmm. which is really convenient. Right. It's kind of like doing it under the cover of darkness, right? Mm -hmm. it's, and the thing about a functioning democracy is that you always want transparency. So this again, you know, he slips it in under the under the radar just before the session closes when people are, you know, packing up their offices for the next however long yeah. you know, it's closed for until maybe till the end of They're the year. They're going back to the know. districts. You know. Um, yeah, I think so, they pick up right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't maybe know. it's like they have a little break. But it's it's you know, the, I don't it's, know. It's sort of the equivalent of saying don't think about an elephant. Yeah. Now, what's going on right now? You think You're about thinking an about an elephant, right? right? Okay, so, so the last thing that, that gets slipped in under the, the, the wire, it's a memorandum. It's not a, you know, it's not it's just anything. A, it's, it's just like, yo, can I please make this, you know, human rights violation a law, please? Yeah. You know. It's like, we should, we should create a we law. We should create a law to force people to wear masks. Right. And so, know? it's the last thing that people think about. And most likely, when they come back into session, it'll be the first thing on the docket. Yeah, so this is like a real fucking fascist move. This is something that, you know, Hitler's cabinet would do. Mm -hmm. you well, know? you know, it allows, basically, you know, it, it gets that idea out there, right? Now mm -hmm. it allows um, the, the operatives within the Democrat Party, Democratic Party in Pennsylvania, to meet secretly out of session, mm -hmm. okay, during the, the, the holiday yep. period, mm -hmm. away, you know, out of, out of sight, out of mind, and it allows them to start formulating what this law is going to be like. And so it is likely that this will be a, a you know, a bill that's presented uh, in the House when session uh, comes back in. Right, it should have, you know, my video should have millions of views. It doesn't, people don't care. People don't care. They're they're really really. I don't know what's going on with Americans, but it's I you know. I, <laughs> well, and you know the comments that are coming in are they're okay. They're the okay. comments that are coming in. Are, but on there's the video a couple of them okay. here here and there that are like you know this is an outrage, and then that's where it ends. Or it's like um, you know like I said before, the the one comment was like, well, there's enough Republicans there, you know, th this won't pass. Well, are you sure about that? And are you sure that because you look know, where we are? What have the Republicans done for exactly, us now? Right, exactly. The Republicans were talking about, you know, getting rid of Wolf. Right. They were and talking ab so, about you know, how these executive orders aren't even. The Republicans have been saying shit all along, and nothing is happening. Right. Exactly. So. And <laughs> right. Exactly. What makes so. you think that anything's going to be any different? <laughs> right. And so you know you've got this this attitude, and then also just like you know like can't somebody else do it for me? So like. What Julie presented in her video was uh, something that was similarly proposed in um, in Norway, in, not Norway, in Denmark. Copenhagen, in Denmark, Copenhagen, right? Where, so. um, where <laughs> Copenhagen, <laughs> no, Copenhagen, Denmark, where um, <laughs> they were they basically you know torches outside of the state house for a whole week or for, more, yeah, and, and banged um, pots and pans and make lots of noise for all day, all night, and they do it in shifts and they make lots of noise. Um, with noisemakers and pots and pans, and they have pitchforks and torches, and they stand outside the state house doors until it is announced, officially announced, that these human rights violations will not be made into law, right. and that they will not continue. Um, and that's what you do. That's so, the only way that right. you can do that. And so, you know, but Americans Americans are very, they give lip service to this kind of action. Nope. But, you know, it's again, like, like um, you know, media savvy and education about culture. Um, this, this idea of protest has been bred out of us sure. um, psychologically. We don't have real protests. For, for years and years, you know, it's like they've created protest zones away from <laughs> where... It's like, it's not a protest zone, it's a block party, it's okay? Right. If, you, if you have police there that are zoning you off and telling you where you can protest, then it's a block party. Right, okay? it's not a protest. It's not and a so, protest. And, and, and this vilification of protest, you know, since I was um, a young man, so I'm talking about like back in the Reagan administration, uh, you know, this has been going on where it's been, uh, you know, protest has been vilified, um, it's been, um, you know, set aside and it's been undermined and it's all these things and it's getting to, it, it's, it's, it's gotten to the point where it's like when people were coming out at the beginning of this whole COVID thing, 
Um, most of them were, you know, Trump supporters and Republicans and libertarians, people with the yellow snake flags, um, gun rights people and, and, and the like. Um, it was easy to vilify them as, you know, reactionary shitheads who, you know, were being selfish and didn't care about grandma or the health of their, you know, their neighbors. So it was easy to, to come out and do that because, you know, two things were going on. One was, you know, the hatred of Trump and all his supporters, you know, those, those basket of deplorables, right? And basement dwellers, you know, this is not me saying this, this is what was said against them during the Trump campaign, you know, the first one. And then on top of that, you know, this whole uh, vilification of, uh, of, of, of um, you know, protest. But then, you know, the lifting up of protests, BLM protests that were going on several, a couple months later. So, you know, it's like they're trying to have it both ways. Right, they're they're lifting up so that the, uh, the 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 liberals are basically vilifying the people who were who were uh, protesting against all the COVID lockdown rules, but then lifting up the the BLM uh, protests and actually participating in them. And it was very similar in in spirit to all those protests that we saw at the beginning of the Trump years where people had very professional looking signs suddenly showing up at the airport to protest the, the, the election of Trump. And we talked about that a lot early on. Yeah. You know? The only protests that should be taking place are the ones against the state. Yeah. Not against, you know, some perceived, you know, racial injustice or whatever. The only protests that should be taking place are the ones where the state makes you put on well, a mask or makes you close your business or wants to pass a human rights violation into law. Well, and the state is the one that is actually um, creating the issues with um, with the racial with the with racial with injustice, you know. Well, because, which is why is, you should be protesting the state. Right. Exactly. You know, and, don't and protest other groups which are fabricated and paid. They're from social movement organizations which come out of like corporate takeover. Right. That's yeah. empty protest. You have yeah. to protest the state. Yeah. Um, but nobody does. And corporations, so. you know. Nobody and, does. And, you know, whereas like nobody understands. BLM is, is corporate sponsored. People right? don't know what words mean. So <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> well, you know, we have, you know, so, so those protests were so well funded, right? And they, they had, you know, they had slogans and they had, you know, basically marketing campaigns. They were basically marketing campaigns on the street, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas like more grassroots, I mean, it was very much AstroTurf, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like fabricated um, grassroots. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, you know, like you said, it was a social movement organization that was well funded. And suddenly, for some reason, all the corporate websites all had the same message of, you know, the Black Lives Matter messages and messaging. This was right after COVID. Right. right. And so, you know, we this haven't to seen that. communitarianism. Right. The common well, good thing. We haven't seen that with, with you know, these other um, protests that are grassroots, right, all around the world. Right. The ones that we've been showing here on, on, this, on this program. Especially after uh, deconstruction, when we show you all the protests that mm -hmm. took place all over the world yeah. in, like, August and September. Um, but the point is, is that, you know, I don't know like all this protest talk like who cares all you really need to do is just defy um empty orders mm -hmm. you know i yeah. mean it's like I, I i honestly do not understand any of this it's very simple your government is a ram your governor or your health department minister or whatever um are just rambling incoherent language that would normally put them in a mental institution <laughs> and yeah. you are treating it as if it is god's law and it's not right yeah so i don't know what to do and these you know? yeah and they're basically marketing campaigns that are incoherent yeah. and don't make sense and right. there's a reason that they don't make sense um and yeah. you know it's like what we've talked about before with the whole you know psychopathic nature of what's going on Right, and there's the a lot of anxiety around stuff. I mean, sure, I get it. I get really anxious having to go anywhere. Yeah, you know, I, I really agree. do. I really get anxious having to go anywhere at all. And but really, the if there's ever a confrontation and someone is like, you know, you have to follow this order, 
then you say, well, orders aren't law. So, well, it is the law. Oh, show me the statute. Right. Show me the statute number and the ordin ordinance number and the civic code that goes with this law. And if they bring up company policy, you can also say that the company policy goes against the Constitution. Or it just goes against, it goes against natural or law. Or human, human rights. Human rights law. Right. I mean, at some point, you just have to be logical. And if these people are like, oh, it's the law, you have to do this, then just be like, okay, show me the statute when the legislative body voted on it, um, when it was placed into law, the date that it was placed into law, and I'll wait. Go ahead. Go get it. I'll wait. Yeah. Oh, wait, right By the here. Way, you know what? I'm just going to do, do my shopping while you go find it. While well, you that. go find it. And, and then, then, you know, then by then, don't I'll give be them out of here. sob stories and tell them, you know, that people have lost their businesses and committed suicide because <laughs> of the loss of businesses. Yeah. Your police officers and your store managers, they don't care about that. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with corporations right now. And coming from the corporate world, the last thing in the world they want to hear is a personal sob, yeah. sob yeah. story. Right. Um, so, uh, and the last thing that you want to do is spend your energy and not get something out of it, which is kind of where I am as creative, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. how does this benefit me? <laughs> right. <laughs> you uh, know, yeah. so, um, <clears throat> you know, so you would just want to say, you know, show me, show me your job description. I will wait, go print out your job description and let's take a look at your job <laughs> description and see if it includes a violation of my human rights. So are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? Are you my doctor? Are you my doctor? I didn't realize <laughs> are you, my you mother? were my doctor. <laughs> are you my mother? I didn't realize that you had the right to perform a medical intervention, which could violate my human rights. I didn't realize that that was part of your $10 an hour if that job description. Go ahead. I will go print it out in your little employee handbook and I'll wait. But I'll do my shopping while I wait. You know, that's just like, yeah. you know, yeah. And I know things are getting really fascist and, you and know, weird and, and hard and difficult. And JP is doing a really great um, script right now about the DPA, which is the Defense Production Act, and its tentacles mm -hmm. wrapping around every facet of your life. Um, so I'm really excited that, yeah. that that's going to be produced soon, and I'm doing one on music. And then um, I'm doing another one on what we were talking about before, the whole idea of like Christmas. So, Christmas and yeah. how we need to get back to misrule and <laughs> yeah. go back to those kind of traditions, mm -hmm. those real traditions of Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not religious or anything, so but we don't fault people who are. Uh, but we have our own traditions here. We have our favorite movies we watch. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we put up some decorations. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the food that we eat, and every once but, in a while you know, we... Think Exchange a gift yeah. if well, we can. Yeah. You know. yeah, exactly. Well, you know, going back to what we we're talking about, I'm going to wrap this up or use this as the sort of wrap up. Is you know, we were talking about the, those those horrible, those dystopic Christmas trees, and something that you know came across our feeds was um, one. I was I was doing some research on the dystopic trees and found that in San Francisco, the Macy's you know tree lighting ceremony that always takes place every year and has hundreds of people show up, you know, in in Union Square. Um, where they also light a giant menorah, um, is um, the, um, uh, it was basically a private, uh, private ceremony, event. private event. And like the dozen or so people who weren't part of the private event, um, who were witnessed it, just happened to be walking by, walking their dogs or walking by when they saw it happen and didn't realize that that was what was going on. And that's really sad, I think. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's again, well, it's, I mean, coming, I mean, it's know, sad from the standpoint of that they are taking this away. It's class war. It's class war. That's the sad part, is what I'm getting at. It's not it's, sad. It's angering well, and it's unfair okay. and it's wrong and it's fascist. Okay. So then the one it's that takes sad. place, the one that takes place here, all right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just use that word? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, meaning, you know, whatever. But, uh, the one that takes place here, it actually would have taken place last night, mm -hmm. um, Light the Night, uh, was a virtual event. <sighs> and that's, yeah. that's even more sad. That's even just, that's just it's fucked pathetic. up. That's what I'm getting at. It's pathetic. I'm using the word sad to represent. This is pathetic. why in the new world, in the new civilization that we create, we will have new 
everything. We will have new traditions where you come over to my house and there will be a giant Christmas tree in my backyard <laughs> and it will be light up the night and you don't have to wear a mask and it's hot chocolate for everyone and it's music blasting and it's, you know, yeah. fun things. Well, and None of this online bullshit. And, and, and lots honestly, of hugs. Yeah, and lots I, of cookies. I honestly, I don't feel like I need to go back to what we were doing before where right. it's like Black Friday is, is, a, is a brawl at Walmart over yeah. like low cost. Not that we ever did that. Well, we never did that. No. Um, but you know, I, but it's there. when I first started uh, seeing you, I rode over to your house on Thanksgiving. Um, oh yeah, that's and, right. Um, and <laughs> um, on the way I saw Best Buy and people were lined up around the, 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 the corner mm. and down the street for the next day. That's sick. For for Black Friday sales. And, and I was just like, that's just messed up, you know? Yeah. That, so that, so those, I don't want to go back to that either, right? Yeah, all those traditions all are those, going away. Well, those, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm not happy, but I'm not, well, actually, no, those traditions are going to be still around. They still want to sell oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know? That's another thing we were going to talk about today, too, is that, um, they're, they're taking away uh, the idea of a family get-together holiday because you keep selling, telling me that you keep seeing places that are open on Thanksgiving right. Day. Right. And I'm you're seeing, like, I'm what? Seeing, I'm seeing signs what? Of, of, fr in front of stores um, that normally would not be open on Thanksgiving. And it's not like they're small businesses that are trying to recoup, recoup what they, they lost They stayed years. open the They whole stayed time. open the whole time. They, you know, like this, the one of those signs was, was at uh, Family Dollar. Right. And, you know, they're going to be open on Thanksgiving Day, which prevents people from getting, getting together, together with, their with their families, right? Families. So this is a further erosion of these these right. traditions and these these um, social interactions and, and um, basically our society. And they're, it's actually eroding the good parts, mm -hmm. right? Not the negative parts, the negative ones that I was talking about where, you know, there's brawls at Walmart on, on Black Friday. Whereas, like, you know, Thanksgiving... Those will stay. Yeah. yeah. Those traditions will stay, unfortunately. Right. And, you know, and, and as toxic as some family gatherings can be, you know, there's still the idea that, you know, like, know, you don't have to necessarily get together with family. You can get together with friends. And that's taking away our social life is the biggest issue that we're facing, right? Right. Now. You know, one of the biggest faces. Yeah. Right. So, and, you know, along with just, you know, this, this moving toward neo-feudalism mm -hmm. and this, this control that please, sir, they have. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> please, sir, more porridge, please. Well, please, sir, may I, you know, go <laughs> see my friend, you know? That is bullshit. Can I go to the pub and, and hang out with people and watch the game? You know, you don't, you don't ask for permission to do anything that is, that involves the human experience. Right. And this is what... This is why I'm not of this world, because it is unfathomable to me to say, you know, can I go see my friend? Like, yeah, no, no like, you know, I like, don't even ask. I shouldn't like, have to show papers to see. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's a good thing that we live in a in a city that's, you know, when we moved here two years ago, it was already covidized it was like living in a bombed out third world country oh, yeah. that had been consumed by the great depression right. already all so the downtown we, department stores were gone already like they were already gone when we moved yeah. here in 2018 it was literally like i was like oh my god where did we move it's just awful here so, so luckily covid is like whatever there's really no place <laughs> i want to go anyway except like maybe two places right but you i'll know, get over it and, and we don't know? have the social ties that we had before so no. in a lot of ways no. you know we were able to kind of float with this thing yeah and, so so you know, like it's still socially and other ways like there is one place that we saw where we were like oh that would have been a cool place to go to yeah. but it's all covidized now like it's this amazing in in the inside of it is amazing i was looking at pictures it's like something you would see yeah, out of san francisco some, right, and i took a video of it um and, and it was <laughs> like it's it was 36 degrees outside and they were setting up tables for outdoor Outside. seating, outdoor dining. And sure, they had the smudge pot things, but you know, that's only good if you're like right under it when it's 36 fucking degrees out. But the but see, the thing is, is they don't have to do that. I know. They can have people come inside. And they choose we not to. We had that one, we have, uh, 
we have two places in one place in in the Pittsburgh area, mm -hmm. and then the other place I forget where they're located. Uh, like Lebanon, Mount Lebanon, yeah, or something. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So it's too far for us. But there are two places, at least in you know the area, that we're like, uh, yeah, we're not changing it anything yeah. you know they don't make you wear a mask it's none of this bullshit social distancing crap it's just like come in and you know and i would and but no place in pittsburgh which is like kind of like the quality of experience that we would like um being from san francisco and you know you can find like little little places here and there they've all shuttered mm -hmm. they've all closed up yeah uh, which is really interesting you think it would be just the opposite mm -hmm. although you know but, there are some exceptions um you know the, yeah. Like a couple places that we went to, there now they have the temperature checks and they have the social distancing and, the, but you know they're more corporate. They are, they probably took the COVID bucks as we like to call them. Yeah. And so now they're towing the line. Right. You know? So they're government occupied mm -hmm. uh, institutions. Right. And and the thing is is that I have a feeling the ones that are defying uh, these decrees uh, made from the naked emperor <laughs> <laughs> of your state, um, the ones that are defying them. I have a feeling they didn't take any loans or any money. Um, I had a f I have a feeling they they're running on GoFundMe campaigns, or they're just you know. Or they're getting good business. Or they're getting good are, business from their yeah, customer base. Right, I mean, right. the place that we went to is a, kind of a place that we wouldn't necessarily normally go, especially right. for our anniversary. But we liked the idea that they're not about making you wear a mask. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just nice to be able to look around the the diner and see other people without a mask. Right. And the, and the servers, no masks. And, and the servers, you know. no mask. And the cook came out and brought me my biscuit from the kitchen because <laughs> they forgot. So, you know. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and it, but it was very cheap and it's, you know, it, but it was, and it was very sweet, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so you're gonna know, have to just create new systems, guys. Exactly, like, and, and and new traditions. And now that we're heading into the holidays, you know, we're seeing how they're fucking with us and how they're taking away the traditions that we've had for at least the last two hundred years. Right. And um, changing things up, and you know, keeping the the negative ones that that have come about in the last two hundred years, but getting rid of the ones that that were more about family and about socializing and 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 um, being a human and being part of the, the, the human experience. And so what we, like Julie said, we need to start creating these new traditions. We need to start defying um, this bullshit and start being the people and the humans that we are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's about it. You want to spin the tops? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Sure thing. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Book of Hours is determined to remain an essential platform that offers a creative interpretation for lockdown skeptics and experts who have been censored by mainstream press. Thanks to your donations, we can carry on doing this essential work as working artists. These big issues of the day are vital and need to be heard. So please share our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make a one-time donation on our PayPal page, but most importantly, please be a part of our team on our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash book of hours and hit the blue button titled become a patron. Thank you.